Amritz in Switzerland, the birthplace of sliding sports. We're here for the race weekend for the BMW IBSF Bobsleigh and Skeleton World Cup. And the final event is the Blue Ribbon, the four-man Bobsleigh. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Martin Haven and John Morgan getting ready for the final heat of the weekend. And John, another exciting race in prospect on this fantastic track. We've had a great weekend of racing, and this four-man race will not disappoint us. Cripps, who won this event last year, well, he flew down the track with what we thought was an insurmountable lead. He was the fourth person out of the chute. He's got a very experienced team with over 100 World Cup starts between them. But this is the surprise of the season. Benny Maher of Austria, second best start times. He medaled in both we uh, events last weekend in Winterberg, which was the European Championships. He's created quite a buzz in Austria. And he's in second place. And he's the only guy challenging, well, the greatest of all time as of yesterday. Friedrich, who's just gets out of bed and wins every race. But today, Friedrich had better start than Meyer up top, but on the bottom part of the track, Benny Meyer matched him and is only four hundredths behind. Martin, boy, do we have a stage set up here for another exciting race in the most historic bobsled track on the planet. Yeah, don't we just? And those top three, by the way, were the top three a week ago in Winterberg. And three of those top four have won the last three races. Benny Meyer took a silver medal back in 2016. But uh, between them, Lochner, Friedrich and Cripps have won the last three races here. So 20 sleds of our 21 from the first heat go through into the second heat. And that means, unfortunately, that Jeff Gabois doesn't get a second run here in the four-man. Brad Hall didn't start today. An injury for brakeman Sam Blanchett. Francesco Friedrich, as everybody has to, limbering up in the snowy car park. Doesn't often get down to gravel here, not until about March or April anyway. And this is his favourite track. It's not the one he's been most successful on, but it is his favourite. There's Ben Cokewell, 62 World Cup starts for him in four-man alone. 71 for... Uh, Mats Miknis, I think it was, in the uh, Latvian team. Just astonishing number of four-man starts alone. That's only World Cup. That's not counting junior category races, Europa Cup, World Championships, Olympics, or anything else. So phenomenal amount of starts. And uh, Intars Dambis it is. He will go off first, actually, with Ras Berchins, or second after Lamin Dean. They go from 20 down to one in reverse order of their first heat performance. Both heats count, and that means that if you have an advantage from the first run, you need to hold on to it because the guys behind will be champing at the bit to get by you. And when we get down to the serious business of the medals, we could have maybe even challenges from Seaman Friedli and Mikkel Vogt, our Swiss drivers. Still a little light snow falling here in Sam Ritz as we get ready for the final heat of the weekend. The four-man bobsleigh. Lamin Dean, Ben Simons, Joel Fearon for the first time this year. And James DeSolo makes his four-man debut as well. Behind Lamin Dean, they get underway for Great Britain with Martin Haven and John Morgan watching the action. Well, you got two sprinters on this team. or the second and third fastest ever 100-meter sprinters, but... It didn't transfer into some good starts, Martin. It just shows you how important the teamwork is. And obviously, these four guys haven't got together. Look at the aerodynamic profile. We're seeing shoulders back there. That camera can really tell you who's got a good team group sitting in those sleds. And Martin, on this track, aerodynamics is very important. A number of the teams spend time in the wind tunnel, two or three hours, changing driver and, and brakeman positions, trying to get the ultimate airflow, reduce the drag, because like you say, when you're doing 80, 90 miles an hour, in fact, when you're doing 45 miles an hour, the aerodynamics are already having an effect. Yeah, on this track, it's a one second, one minute five to get down. Most tracks, it's 50 seconds. So this is a super speedway. Lyman Dean guards the queen in his daytime job. 105.67. You want to know what you know, a, a 146 kilometer an hour top speed is at the bottom? That's 90 and a half miles an hour. 
on sheet ice. Is that all? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he just went. Yeah. He just went five tenths faster than his first run, Martin. Uh, yeah. We we'll look at the back end pop up. That's 1,387 pounds popping up right there. And then the same thing on the exit of uh, Nash into Dixon. He wasn't perfect. Not many are. And then down there, he was very late. When you see the cowling split like that, that means the articulation gets maxed out. But Lamin is the leader. At least for now, four hundredths of a second separated Lamin Dean from Ralph Bertzins. The Latvian with Arnis Bibris making his four-man World Cup debut, Laris Kaufmanis, and the veteran Intars Dambis, 71st World Cup start for that man right in the center of your picture. I want to know how many he's missed since his first race. Can't be many. So the Latvians, a little bit better start, 5.12. Look on the left side of your screen, the velocity. They had the best start, but they didn't have the better velocity than the British sled. That means how they got in, sat down. We say you must sit down with cat-like movements. And every hundredth counts, Martin. As we know, there's a couple sleds that are separated by a hundredth as we go to the second run. Well, these guys separated by four tenths from Lamindeen after 1,700 meters. I mean, that's that's sprint distances, isn't it? Burzins is the only guy who crashed in training. Doesn't have a lot of experience with the four mans like he does with the two man. Four tenths back of Lamindeen. So is Burzins having a bad run? No, I think Lamandine had a great run, and Lamandine had a bad first run. And, you know, this isn't tennis. You don't get to throw one of these out. You got to add them both up. Two heat total. 106.45. Well, he went three tenths slower. Lamandine went five tenths better. That's 80 hundredths difference. No consistency in these two teams that have come down the track so far. And that's so much the key here. As you say, both runs have to count. You can't have a loose one. You can't call let and then go again. You have to make them both count really late. I mean, again, eight, 10 yeah. feet past the apex there before he maxed out his height in the horseshoe. Then the crossover into telephone. This is the exit of telephone into Shamrock and he taps there. That throws him into the corner wrong. And then he taps there on the exit of Shamrock again, or the, uh, you know, so the Devil's Dyke. So he's made a couple mistakes. Well, next up, Mihai, Mihai Tentea of Romania. Hasn't ever raced here in San Moritz before, so this is the first time for him this week. 5'11", he's got 2,700s to play with. Look at the velocity. Not as good as Lam and Dean's. I see some shoulders back there. That's that camera to check out. The aerodynamics. So I give him a B plus, B minus there. This young Romanian we know can drive, Martin. He's the shortest athlete in the field. Sitting up a little higher than most, though, and as a driver. I like to see him get down where his nose is. And I put a down to seven hundredths. Could be red numbers here next clock. Yeah, hasn't been a very comfortable trip through the forest so far. Second best speed, a hundredth in it with Lamindine. See if he gets clean down here. Now watch the exit of Mark. No, listen, he hits here. He does. Gary Stratz cost him right there. 1700s back. Lamin, what happened in the first run, Lamin? <laughs> He's picked up one of spots. those. It was yeah. one of those, wasn't it? It was a loose first heat, and oh. uh, Mihai Tente had a loose second heat. And he, he was second fastest speed, but John, second fastest, he was still three kilometers an hour slower than Lamindin at that, at that final speed trap. So it was a big gap from first to second in, in speed. Martin, he was 1,400 slower. Remember, Lamindin was like six tenths better. So, yeah. uh, right here, this is the same problem. Ah, he got through there out of Shamrock. And then here down there past Devil's Dyke, there's a skid. He had green numbers to that point, but the young 22-year-old. 
Well, if Lamandine had produced his second heat in the first heat, he would have been 12th, not 20th. Next up, Ivo de Bruyne from the Netherlands. Sorry, in the truck, Ivo de Brown. That's how the Dutch like to pronounce it. Best here, 11th two years ago. 17th after the first heat today, though, and taking a while to settle in the back. Yeah, they had a, a hard hit as they entered curve one. A lot of times you'll see a brakeman hovering as they go through curve one and then slowly disappearing from sight down that first straightaway, just not to put the sled into a skid. Two tenths lead, that's dropped from 2300s at the previous clock. You know, he's a good driver. The horseshoe, watch the line, does he get up near the lip? Yeah, that's pretty good. Crossover, only 1300s, doesn't have the speed Lamentine has. I believe Lamb is going to have a chance to catch this one, too. 400s. OK, he's got uh, 200 meters to keep it straight. And he's straight, but he's behind. Lamb and Dean is going to get another victim here. How many spots is he going to fall? One. 106.05. He went slower in the second run. Again, Lamin Dean yeah. went six tenths faster. So, Lamin, you were penalized for that bad first yeah. run, but you certainly made up for it in the second run. Well, Lamin Dean's best result here goes back to 2017. He was 14th. Evo's best result here, See 11th, two years back. Look at the aerodynamic ride of the athletes. Boy, look at the brakeman. Boy, his back sitting out of the back of that sled. That's where the air comes over to the top, Martin, as you know from your auto racing experience. The air comes out the back, and they describe it as dirty air. You want to try as much clean air as you can. Lamindine of Great Britain leads after the first four sleds. Next up, 16th after heat one, Dominic Dvorak. And each of the sleds that comes now will have an advantage over our current leader. Dvorak is nearly four tenths of a second, 36 hundreds in front. Let's see if he can find speed with this Valner sled down at the bottom of the track. And indeed, still comfortably the fastest man out of the forest. 512, 508, the first run, second best load or the velocity. Look at the aerodynamic profile. You don't see any shoulders there. Now you do, but the straight-on shot, we didn't see anybody, so give them an A-minus for their aerodynamic profile. Three-tenths. We've seen three-tenths go away from horseshoe Ooh. down. Ooh. That wasn't good. Yeah. See Nash and Dixon how are much not being He's low, very low. Yeah. Neither is the snake. 2800s. He gets it down to the teens here. Watch out. No, it's pulling away now. Dvorak, who's got a pretty good resume for four man. Should have enough in the tank to take the lead from Lamindine at the line. He's got good speed, not as good. 3300s up though, 105.7. So that wasn't quite as quick as Lamindine's first heat. He survives, uh, as his second heat, he survives on the advantage he had from heat one. Dvorak was 100th the way from, from 15th. So he's in a, a tough battle not just to hold this place but to try and claw his way up the order as well he was 10th here last year john this is not a big race weekend for him yeah does not have the starts he used to get nice look at these beautiful pictures crossover under the telephone curve dominic probably the fastest guy in the front seat they say he's a 10.9 sprinter yeah 10, 900 meter man. Lamindine's got two nine second 100 meter men in his team. Boy, oh boy, that's quick, isn't it? Next up, Patrick Baumgartner, youth Olympic champion. And behind him, Eric Fatazzini joined the team this year. Costantino Ugi and Alex Panini starting his first ever four man race, and Baumgartner barely gets in the sled. 516 start. It's better than their 520 they had in the first heat. One thing about Gallagher, 
he really flew on the bottom part of the track with a deficient start. I give the uh, Italians an A minus there, their aerodynamics. We can see anybody in the back there. He's got a lot of experience, just doesn't have any kind of good results, Mark, just because he gets a deficient start. He had a top 10 in the two man in the first event of the year in Segolda. I thought this might be a year for him to come out and start doing something. 2300 speed. I thought last week in Winterberg, a little glimmer of promise there because he had a 10th place finish in Winterberg. It was a big field with all the big star names apart from the Latvians and a top 10 finish. And that's sort of what we've been expecting him to produce in the four man. Third best speed now. He might drop at least one, maybe two here. Two spots, fifth best time of the run. Lamin Dean goes up one more. Manny Mahata, the coach, the former world champion for Germany. 2011. So Baumgartner, he's got a lot of trips down these tracks. It's time for him to start to produce, Martin. Yeah. Well, he's lucky that at the moment there is nobody really coming up behind him in the Italian oh. program. Do you see that flop off there? That was. Look at the wind coming in here, Martin. Yeah. That's blowing snow, snow on the it. track and bits of branches and stuff. It's a natural track, it's in the forest, and sometimes the forest is in the track. Low line. <laughs> man, he'll be beating him up runners, about yeah. that. Yeah. Come on, man, speed. be brave, get There's up no to the lip. No speed get in that Get up to the lip and, th and then Steering. back it off a fraction. Yeah. <laughs> Cody Bascu next up for the USA with Bray McConnell, Carlo Valdez, and Kyle Wilcox behind him. Yeah, you got quite a diverse crowd here in the U.S. 5'10", the best start. Let's see about their velocity. Good velocity. They good, good start. Sixth best start in the first run. Guy from Whitehall, New York. McConnell's from Tacoma, Washington. Valdez from Newport Beach, California. And Wilcox from Tampa, Florida. They got all four corners of the United States covered. Yeah. They got everybody hemmed in half a name of this team. I wonder how Carl Wilcox got in. Where, where does Brian Scheimer live in Florida again? Not far from Tampa, is it? Yeah. Kyle Wilcox was part of the next great Olympian program that the U.S. team has. Yeah. He's a former running back at the University of Pennsylvania. This looks like a better run for Cody. He had a good, good start, good top hat, but lost speed in the bottom, and we're seeing that again. Yeah, he was just you know, a hundred ahead. ahead. And he's dropped behind. Top, Jack, top seven start. The lead. Second place for Cody, second place at the line for Cody Bascu. So he will be no he worse 23, than 15. 2300 slow. And he had the seventh best start in the first run. So they're getting the starts, you know, to get in the top 10. Yeah. Cody's got Last experience in this here, track. He he's was, been here. He was sixth and ninth in his last two outings, John. Didn't race here last year, but he's, he knows how to get down he here. He wasn't. I don't know if he was racing these sleds the last time he was no, here. He, he didn't might have race been in a bogey. That's but, for sure. Yeah. But. Okay. The Bodine always got good numbers down at the bottom, didn't it? Really good. So getting closer to our top 10, this is Francis Roman Heinrich with Lionel Lefebvre, Alan Alle, and Steven Borges Mondanaka, who has done every one of his four-man races before today for Monaco. No Rudy Rinaldi this season. He appeared very briefly in the two-man. We haven't seen him since. I'm sure that Rudy is entirely healthy right now. Another former Youth Olympic medalist. The 20th best start of the 21 teams in the race. 514 this time, 200's better. Seventh best velocity. But Martin, he drove into a 13th place spot. So, you know, if he had a better start, he'd have a better chance. Good speed in the bottom. That's the only way he could overcome that start deficiency to put himself in this position. 800's. Ooh, you listen to that, he flopped off Nash. Let's see if he keeps the green numbers here. 10 starting to pull away. This is what he did in the first run. 
good bottom half, good speed. You got the 20th best start. You drive into the 13th spot. You got to be doing something right. It's the best speed, speed on the bottom here, though. Not enough. Ahead of Dominic Dvorak. Crushed. Oh, boy. That was close. Yeah, there's yeah. been a lot Magical of people giving there. that a long, Excellent. hard look, wasn't he? <laughs> Woo! Yeah, stop it before we get to the rubber and ruin another set of runners. Well, he had a tenth in hand that was over... A hard hit. More than that. Yeah, he had a tenth in hand over uh, Dvorak from the first hit. Uh, first heat came over the line with only three of it remaining. Ah, uh, wasn't great, There's was it? Nash and Dixon. Flop. Oh, boy, that's Snake. Yeah, it's Snake and Nash and Dixon have been yeah. a nemesis to almost everybody from it's skeleton, woman's Bob, Mana Bob, four man Bobs. Look at the aerodynamic late. profile of the team. Yeah. Late, late there. And that makes Telephone Shamrock and Devil's Dyke a bit of a, a mess as well. Next up, Marcus Tricol for Austria. 18th best start in the first heat, but 12th at the line. Yeah, doesn't get the starts. If he had the starts that his teammate Benny Meyer is getting, he might be down there in the top seven or eight. His coach, Wolfgang Stomper, who was a speed merchant in his day for Austria with Less than average starts and heat metal, but he always posted the best speeds on the bottom part, almost any track he was on. I wouldn't be surprised if this is a, he's got some runners on here from Wolfgang Stomper. Certainly, I'm sure Ooh, Wolfgang hi. is helping the crews to massage the sleds to get the most out of them. Boy, their real articulation was split there on the exit of Shamrock. 500, 600 back. He was fast in the first run down here. He's going to need to be fast again. He's going to drop a couple of spots. There's only 300s first to second. Heinrich and Dvorak are basically a dead heat, and he does drop those he drops. 500s back. Could be a tie. Drops two places. Is that a tie? Can you believe that? Two places. Yeah. Yeah, that... 500s you know, is the difference. And he had the worst start of the three sleds that are, two sleds are ahead of him. Oh, I don't mind, I don't mind the high. Look at the sign, the orange sign, the yellow sign. If he's, you know, looks like he's late there, Martin. You should be neutral when you get, you could see the runners change direction there. And then here's the mistake. Look at the articulation split. You know how much air's running in there, Martin? You know, at 70 miles an hour, 75 miles an hour. <laughs> yeah. That's that's that a couple hundreds right there. So, yeah. Outside of the top 10, we get to Christoph Hafer. He has had two World Cup starts before this season in four man, both of them in Lake Placid. And last week he raced with us to sixth place in Winterberg. So that's his career high, 5.14 the start. 400s worse, third best velocity, didn't have it straight there. The exit of the second curve, 1500s in the bank. Didn't have a very good first run. That's pretty good there. Got a 12. Let's see what he does with Nash and Dixon. Flops. Boy, a lot of team are flopping there. Medium line, 13, he's got it back on point now. Best speed, you would expect best speed from this German sled, 17, he's starting to pull away now. Former junior world champion multiple times, right Martin? And Harper is going to take the lead. That's a decent run. 105.65. Still not as quick as his first heat. No. So it no, looks like maybe wasn't. the track is not allowing them to produce the same sort of pace. And that really shows that Lamin Dean going that quarter second quicker. His first heat was not where it it's should have been. 
Well, there's been 65 or so sleds with the pilot sleds that have come down the track so far. And, you know, it's natural ice. Look at the number two guy hanging out. He wants to get the three guy to sit down before he gets in his position. Of course, he's over the top of the driver. Doesn't want to bang up the driver. Nash and Dixon, Snake, I don't think I've seen these two curves be this challenging as we've seen them this weekend. I like it. Yeah, we thought they just can't yeah. come <laughs> straight down the track. Exactly right. So Christoph Harfer leads from Roman Heinrich and Dominic Dvorak. Ten down, ten to go here in San Moritz. Yeah, right from the start of the weekend in the skeleton races, it looked like they were going to be trouble central, and they have. Nash and Dixon and Snake as well. So we haven't seen that much trouble in Snake in several years, I don't think. And then the problems with Nash and Dixon, Francesco Fugio was saying yesterday, he said that makes it hard to get the line you need into Horseshoe. And if you don't get the line you need early enough in Horseshoe, then suddenly you're late. And that means carrying speed into Telephone, Shamrock, Devil's Dyke, it's all gone. So Nash and Dixon are affecting speed in the forest. Nothing on any of these tracks is it standalone, is it? They're all connected. You make one mistake and it haunts you all the way to the finish line. Well, there's Roman Heinrich in second place. Sleds getting loaded here. They'll go down the hill to the car park where all the sled trucks are. There's the Latvian to the top. I'm sure they're glad to be back and waiting to go racing at the track instead of back home. And the track workers, a little bit of, yeah, repair work going on where thoughtless drivers are crushing their wall. <laughs> so Christoph Harper in the leader's spot. Second. Yeah, Roman Heinrich behind him. Dominic Dvorak in third spot. I've well, seen some great racing this weekend. Some big stories as well. First ever win in men's skeleton for Alexander Gassner. How exciting was that to win by a hundredth over Martin Stukos? And then this Russian coach beating the living daylights out of his brake man. This is to encourage them to leave fast, otherwise he's going to do it all again. <laughs> Samrit, Switzerland, the fourth of our events for four man of a second of our events for four man bobsleigh and the final heat top 10 to come alexey stulnev in 10th place for russia having a much better day in the four man than he did in the two man when he missed the cut yesterday now can he move up the order martin he was seventh last week in winterberg with not very good starts and uh he's in a race with his young teammate to see who emerges as Russia won. Very experienced Martin. He's been on this track. He's been on the circuit. In fact, he got 12th here last year. Yeah, he's had 12th the he's last a couple battle of years. With Hafter. His best result in ninth place was three years ago, but I don't think he is going to be happy unless he gets to Rostislav Gajtukovic, his teammate. Well, he was 200s and he made a couple mistakes. And there's a, he got away with that one late on the shamrock. Ooh, tap there. That mistake just cost him 400s. This is where Hafter was perfect. And Stolnev's going to have to be perfect to have a chance. Probably going to drop one spot, Martin. I don't see two. Well, Should have got decent speed out yeah, of the Valder sled. Yeah, so he slips one, and that means Christoph Harper is in the top ten. So Harper does not want to be world. out of the top ten, yeah. No, he doesn't. His best World Cup result, Christoph Harper, sixth place in Winterberg last week. Of course, German track, one he knows much better than Sam Moritz. And yeah, the snake. Careful. Stulnev is going to end up where he was last year, down in the bottom end of the top 12. So he'll be no worse than 11th. Second place with nine to go. Christopher Spring, Emily, Mark, Black. 
It's not looking like he's enjoying this season enormously, I have to say. Next up, Chris Spring, who is enjoying being back behind the steering ropes of a bobsled. Behind him, Mike Evelyn, Murray Malacca and Shaq Murray-Lawrence all making their World Cup four-man debut today. I said uh, Murray Lawrence is a CFL guy. Locker is a real estate guy from Mississauga, Ontario. Mike Evelyn, he's from Ottawa. He's an electrical engineer. He might be one of them guys too smart to be in the sport, former <laughs> hockey player. And Springer is just a bobsled veteran, is what he is. Great personality, pilot. Martin, one thing we've, uh, we've been told, he's lost a lot of weight, Chris Spring, since we saw him a couple years ago. Took a year off last year. Spring. Spring. Eight best speed, with Christoph not good. Harper. Yeah, Harper looks like he might pick up another one. He was only 800s behind Chris Spring from the first heat. The gap is out now to 1100s. Spring needs top speed at the bottom. Going to be close. Dropping at least one. 1500s back at the line. Six he drops best behind time. Stulnev. So Stulnev will get a top 10 finish. Second with eight to go. Stulnev's best result here, a ninth place. So he only needs mistakes from one more sled, and he will have a personal best. With another flop. I guess everybody's just going to flop off that Nash part of the track. Look at the line, pretty low, very low, then late. Let's see how he crosses over into telephone. Not bad, but in the exit of Shamrock, you can see all the grooves there. He got, he got out of there without hitting. You can see the grooves and the marks in the wall where everybody's hitting on the exit of that Shamrock. First World Cup weekend in a couple of years for Chris Spring. He'll take what he's got. This is the only sled that Alexei Stulnev cares one iota about. It's his teammate, the youngster Rostislav Gajtukovic. Gajtukovic, 26 years old, a World Cup debutant this season. It's his fourth ever World Cup race in four man. And he is ahead, eighth place after the first heat, but he needs to hold that ahead of Stulnev. Martin, he's been impressive. He's fourth last week in Winterberg in the first four-man race of the year. Gets starts, but I see some people, I see some shoulders back there on our camera that we do the uh, aerodynamic grade, so I'm gonna give him a B plus. Let's see how he flops off. There's Sonny. Now watch, listen, listen for this off Nash Dixon. See if he flops. Yep, not too bad though. It's good height in Horseshoe to build speed down through Telephone and Shamrock oh. into the forest. Big 4, lead, 4400s. Well, he's looking to move up. Seventh place, Seaman Friedley. Sixth place, Mikhail Vogt, easily within striking distance. Guy Tukovic could be aiming for a top five finish in his first four man race in Samaritz. Fifth best speed in the line. He's going to leave Stulnev trailing in his wake. He leaves Harper wow. trailing in his wake. That's a big run. He's gone quicker than his first heat. And John, he's only the second man in 12 sleds to do that. And that's not because his first heat was bad. Pretty consistent, but I think this is the rising Russian star. Young, good start times. He does what everybody else has been doing, having problems in Nash and Dixon. Here, look, look at him, he's, is he late? No, he was coming out on a good line. Look at the, the runners, you could see how much steering he did there into the telephone. Out of telephone here though, hard smack. Not that hard, but a skid. Well, Guy Tukovic looks pretty helmet, happy Martin. with that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they've got their eyes on him. Seven to go. Next two sleds are from Switzerland. Seaman Friedley with Roger Leingruber moving up to two. Dropping back to three, Adrian Fessler on the left and Dominic Schlepp for now on the brakes. 5-12 start. Well, that immediately leads them behind starts. Guy Tukovic. Yeah, Guy Tukovic started 5-0-1. That's a phenomenal start from the Russians. 
Well, there's one thing the Swiss know how to do on this track in St. Marais. Ooh, do you see the brakeman bounce up there? Skid. Swiss, ooh, another skid. This doesn't look very good. Looks good for the Russians. 2,500's back. Martin, he could drop three or four spots. This is a pretty loose run. Uh, and that's the problem with Seaman Friedley and with Mikhail Vogt. They're still relatively inexperienced. Vogt only in his third year of driving, Friedley in his second in the World Cup. And so that consistency isn't quite there. Not sure where Guy Tukovic finds his consistency, but you're right. He's going to be behind. 2,600's back. 105. Just barely 74. in front of Hafter, though. Yeah. Three hundreds and had a halfer. And he went three tenths slower. But, you know, he had that expression more hits than Elvis up top. Mm -hmm. um, watch this one in Snake. Look at that brakeman shake around like that. It means he's not totally stable in the sled. And then this is on the straightaway into Horseshoe. A little loose there. Doesn't look like it penalized him with the line into Horseshoe. The crossover was good. And this is a hard, uh, no. But you saw the the, the cowling, really, the articulation split. Yeah. So he was hard, and he had to Robin Hood it off there, Martin. And when that cowling splits like that, all the air runs in. Mikhail Volk next up. Silvio Weber, Sandro Michel, and new boy this season, Andreas Haas on the back brakes. Melanie Hassler claimed a bronze medal in the women's race earlier, but there hasn't been a four-man medal in this track for Switzerland for 11 long years. Hey, the gold medal, we talked about it in the first heat, the 2007 World Championships, the gold medal that the Swiss, Evo Rogue won. I thought I was at a football stadium. It was so <laughs> loud, Martin. I still remember it that was, as uh, one of my top moments, top moments in the sport. To listen to the yeah, Swiss that. cheering on Evo Rogue. I, I remember Cedric Grand when he got off the back of the sled, just uncontrollably excited about it. Both though, it's all going away, skidding and hitting everything in sight at the, through the forest. He could fall behind his teammate here. He could fall two yeah. spots. Going to need the, the magic line down here, the speed. Speed is second best speed. He might get back into the second spot. Yes, he does. Barely. The Russians have picked off two. Swiss. Well, that young Russian, remember that name, Martin. I think that's the Russians are going to put their money on him. Gets good starts. Yeah. In the I, I already the have. He's carrying my savings, that's for sure. Okay. Well, Mikhail Vogt hits, hits everything, doesn't the, he? This is out of the. Uh, telephone into Shamrock real late and then you know the back end of the sled the articulation split the air running in there you know he held on to beat his teammate but Rostislav Gajcukovic the leader from Mikhail Vogt and Seaman Friedley five to go in San Moritz Oscars Melbardis of Latvia, winner here in 2014 and 2015. He's been a medalist since in 2017. A couple of years away from the sport after Pyeongchang. And now he is back. He, he's back with a bad back, Martin. He's had back surgery. This is the Olympic gold medalist in 2014. You know, and he used to have the dominant start times. You know, of course he is getting on an age. 1100s down to 900s. If I'm the Russian at the bottom, I'm liking that. What kind of line is he having? Horseshoe. Medium high. 1100s to 1100s. That's a good sign. Only third best speed. It looks like he's stopped the bleeding. Yeah, the 16, Russian is pulling away now. Speed. 
Russian uh, Dajukovic, our current leader, didn't have the best speed anywhere. And this is Melbardis painting himself into a top five finish. Hasn't raced four man this year. They weren't in Winterberg, but he's in the top five. 105 39. 1200 slower. But he's the top of the leaderboard, second best start. The Russians had the better start than he did. But his experience. Now, look how big this guy is. Look at him. How does he get in that bathtub with that 250 pound frame? Yeah, that's decades the, of experience, isn't it? Look at the strides, you know, the cohesion. Get in, get down quickly before this first curve. You think this is easy, running about 25 miles an hour, and then, you know, getting in. Look at the number two guy, wait for the three guy and four guy. The arms come up. He's the leader. I don't know if that's good enough to move him up. Well, he's got three winners from the last three years and a bronze medalist to deal with, a silver medalist to deal with, who are ahead of him. Winner 2018, Johannes Lochner, with Florian Bauer, Christopher Weber, and Christian Rust behind him. Third fastest start in the first heat, a hundred out to the medals. 03, 05, slower. Look out. See the velocity? No, we didn't see velocity on his sled both runs. If you look at that, there's no, hardly anybody you see back there, so give him an A plus on the uh, aerodynamic profile. Johannes doesn't like the position he's in. He's going to try and change it now. 3,900s. He needs to get this out to 45 or 1,500s to really put a pressure on the three sleds coming up. Well, he is battling with Justin Chris for the medals. Just That's not good there. The medals. Back he has it increased 45 to 46. 5,100s. He's coming on now. He gets it out to 60-hundreds, Martin. I think he's going to win a medal. Let's see what he's got at the line. Oscar Smelbardis won't be in the medals, but Hansi Lockner 56. might be. 09, 800 slower than his first run. Well, we're going to say now, John, aren't we, that the track isn't giving the same sort of speed as it did in the first no. heat, and then Friedrich's going to set a new track record. We know that's going to happen, so let's just get that out of the way immediately. Okay, so let's see how this very professional start to look at the number two guy. Look, he's waiting, waiting, waiting. Okay, the three guys set. Okay, my arms come up and come down. Look at the cohesion there. Great aerodynamic profile. I say he didn't get out of there with the perfect line. But here, look at the articulation split again. Hit, skid. That wasn't perfect. Never seen anyone crash there, but that came close. Justin Crooks of Canada. The war cry is they charge off the block. Ryan Summer, Cam Stones, Ben Coquell, silver medalists a week ago. Their first World Cup race since the World Championships. And Cripps won this event last year. Mark, I think you said in the first heat that they have over 100 years of experience between the four of them in this slam. <laughs> 100 races, 100 years possibly, not quite so much. 100 races, yeah. excuse me, 100 races. Yeah. 160, like 100 races 160 four-man starts before this, and that's just the three break points. Might be the most... Like Chris has done 88 four-man races on his own. Plus nine to plus nine. He stopped the bleeding. Now he's got to start chasing down Lochner. Plus three. He will chase him down. Cripps, who won Best the race speed. last year, had a fastest sled we've seen since Lamin Dean. There it is. Cripps he's is going to be in the medals. At least a bronze. Does 105 05, 500 slower. Wow, good weekend for Cripps. Bronze so specialist in the two oh, man racing. yesterday. Yeah, oh boy, silver medalist in Winterberg. He'll be at least bronze again here in San Moritz. He'd never had a two man medal before yesterday. He won the four man last year. He's in the medals again.
Well, when you got decent start, great equipment, and you've been born to drive a bobsled like Cripps, it all adds up to winning medals. Hansi Lochner. Look Lautner. at uh, Lochner congratulating him. Yeah. Congratulating him for getting beat. He's such a sportsman. Ben Cokewell, by the way, on the right. team, he's had 62 World Cup starts in four man alone. And here's the surprise 400s off the lead, Benny Meyer of Austria. Dan at Moldovan is back with the crew this season. Marcus Sammer at three, Christian Huber on the back. So, can Benny take another four man medal? He was bronze in Winterberg a week ago. Five flat in the first run. Oh, 499. One of the few teams that go better in the second the run. 200s off the start record set by Francesco Frugic in the first heat. There's an Austrian leading the Women's World Cup Tour, Katie Beyer. The Austrians' success this season is because they've been proved at the start. Meyer with the second best start. And let me say this, he was 900s behind. Friedrich was coming up in the first run at this point. And he got it down to 400. So he does have the speed on the bottom part of the track. Look at the lead, Mark, 3,600. And, and he's got a Valner sled that the Federation bought last year. So this should produce good speed at the bottom. He's going to be at least a silver medalist. From four tenths up, it's down Martin. to three tenths. Might be two tenths of the line. Looks like Benny Meyer. In the silver medals. medal for Meyer. Wow. You know what? What this is doing for Austrian sliding. They're, you know, Janine Flox, the leader of the World Cup, female uh, skeleton. Catherine Beyer is leading women's World Cup. He's winning medals. You know, in Austria, yeah. there's three sports in the winter: skiing, skiing, and skiing. He's putting bobsledding into a little bit more higher profile in Austria. And it's just called talent, Martin. He's good yep. starts. Well, he's he hung World it out Cup there, best though, ever. Martin. That was the... World Cup best ever results in four man was silver here five years ago. He will be at least a silver medalist. And next up is his sponsor. Francesco Friedrich, Torsten Margis, Martin Grotkop, and Alexander Schuller. For Torsten, this is a 50th four-man World Cup start. He's got nine wins and 16 other medals. Alexander Schuller, in, in 12 previous starts, has got 10 medals in four-man. Well, the best start, the best velocity, but a little tap there. Oh, it's not perfect. Good aerodynamic profile, as you would expect from the greatest of all time. I always remember now, a great Steve Holcomb comment about his starting team, John. He said, these guys give me room to make mistakes, and that's what the start does for Friedrich. He can get away with some of these errors that would hurt others. Okay, 10 hundreds. That's relative to the start advantage, best speed. He gets us out to 12 or 15, he's the winner, which we expect him to win anyways. There's the 16, best speed. Martin, he's doing what he's been doing since he came out in the circuit in 13. And this guy's won incredible, as a junior he? world champion. It yeah, is gonna be a new track record as well to win gold. It is a new oh, track record to win gold. Five, I said that. Oh, That's <laughs> ridiculous. Get Leopold, you've just seen the grin on his face. Yes, look, they see the record. Look at Margus. Again, everything, every time they get near a track, they want the record. They want to end this season, like every season, with every start record, every track record, and every medal. It doesn't always happen, but that is the target. There's Alex Schuller on the left-hand side. This is Schuller's, what is it, I say his 12th start in a four-man, a 13th start in a four-man, and that is his 12th medal. Francesco, well, the guy the who has the best start. <laughs> he, the guy with the best start at the top of the track has the best chance for the best time at the bottom. He's got the best start, the best equipment. And Martin, he doesn't make mistakes. He's not hurt. I don't want to jinx him, but he's always healthy. You don't have the best starts unless you're all healthy. 
just, you know, Michael Schumacher is the guy that he idols. He's matching, he's matching Schumacher stuff right now. Yeah, he really is. That is win number 48 of his career in two and four man. And that is second win of the season from two starts for Francesco Friedrich. Medals again for Benny Meyer and Justin Cripps. This time Meyer silver, Cripps bronze. They were the other way around last week. Hansi Lochner again in the top five. He's fourth place here though, ahead of Oscars Melbardis and Rostislav Gajcukovic again a top six finish. And Lamin Dean climbing from 20th after the first heat up to 16th place. So he had a disappointing first heat, but a better second one. Two start records, two track records. It is what we come to expect from the benchmark of bobsledding. Francesco Frugic did it here in the two man. He did it here in the four man. Just swept the board on what is his favorite track. This is the week he looks forward to for the other 51. This is why he does it. <laughs> Just another day at the bobsled office. Yeah, and uh, he said he said after the two-man race, I'd love to come back here every week and race here every week. Friedrich leads the World Cup standings. Benny Meyer up to tying for second with Justin Cripps. Lochner fourth, just eight points ahead of Guy Tukovic, with Christoph Harfer in sixth. Alexei Stulnev, much better proposition in the four-man so far than he has been in the two-man. And Vogt and Friedli both in the top ten of the World Cup standings. Well, that's two of our four World Cup races this season as we head to Winterberg in Germany and then to, uh, to Koenigsee, rather. We've been to Winterberg, to Koenigsee in a week's time. Very different proposition, but another one that should favour our German athletes. And, of course, home ice for Johannes Lochner. Well, he'll have to beat Francesco Friedrich to come out on top, and so will everybody else. Until then, until we meet again next Friday for the skeleton competition, from John Morgan, from me, Martin Haven, and from the whole IBSF TV crew, thank you for being with us. Stay safe. We look forward to seeing you next week in Bavaria.